Hello everybody, my name is Pixel Rain or Rain for short. I finally decided to try making some Unity tutorials for YouTube after spending way too much time watching them myself, and what better place to start making these tutorials than with everybody's favorite, voxels. Yeah, that means we're gonna start with something that looks like Minecraft, but it won't be like that for too long. Once we've gotten all the base work in, we'll be switching up to a method that I've written, or you know, taken some myriad of other methods into what is ultimately a novel approach to dual contouring. But for now, let's get started with the basics. Today we're going to be setting up the basic mesh structure for our container. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and make a few scripts here. We're going to have a data folder and inside yield data folder, we're going to drop in a voxel class. Um, we're actually going to set it up as a struct because of allocations and whatnot. So we can go ahead and wipe all this fun stuff out. And it's going to be a very, very, very basic struct for right now. It is only going to have a public byte ID. That's all we're going to use. We're using bytes for the space savings more than anything else. Now that we've got our ever so simple voxel we're gonna go ahead and make another one another script called container all right so we've got our new script called container we're gonna start by adding some requires so anytime you instantiate a game object and you add the container class to it or if you create an object and you're seeing at it It'll automatically add the components for the mesh filter, mesh render, mesh collider. And then we're going to go ahead and add a couple variables here. Uh, get our position and our references to the mesh render and so on and so forth. Then we're going to make a function called initialize. So what this will do is just assign our material to mesh render and set our local position variable to whatever position we tell it to. Um, not super useful right this minute, but a little ways down the road, it'll become the uh, pretty much a pivotal point if you're trying to make large scale terrain. We also need a method to match up with this called configure components. This just gets the uh, components from the game object. Nice and simple. And then we're going to actually start setting up our mesh data structure because I don't personally like to have a bunch of this stuff just floating around in my container class. I would rather have it be contained in its own struct like this. So what this is, is it's going to house a mesh, our list for the vertices, triangles, UVs, and whatever else we have, like colors. Um, so our first function in here is going to be clear data, which if it's initialized, it's set to false, we're just going to you know, create new list for everything and new mesh. If it's not set to false, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and just clear the lists. Lists are not the best approach to doing this. It's just the easiest. Um, you don't have to deal with allocations up front, but not good for garbage collection in the long run. So we'll be revisiting that at some point in the future. Then we've got a, another function called upload mesh. Um, all this does is set the vertices, triangles, UVs, and some other boilerplate mesh stuff that you traditionally want to have. Yeah, so that's that's about it for our mesh data. Now we're going to go ahead and make two functions to actually do something here. Because right now all we have is our components and a mesh data structure. That's not super helpful to us. So we're gonna have a generate mesh function and a upload mesh function. 
and before we can actually start writing the generate mesh function, we're gonna need some voxel statics or some static variables that are gonna be used anytime we're creating a block or you know just a what makes up the mesh. So from the top, we've got the vertices that each voxel is going to be made out of. Um, you start with the bottom left corner of a cube, and then you go to the right corner, top, and then top left. And then on the front side of it, you have the bottom left, bottom right, and so on and so forth. Um, we've got the vertex index, which I use to uh, map the face to the vertex. Um, then you've got your UVs and then the triangles themselves. This is just used to index into one of these four vertices and add it to our array of triangles. So now that we've got that sorted out, we're gonna go ahead and do our generate mesh function just gonna look something like this to start with it helps I guess if you actually have some uh, mesh data declared all right so when we start this function we're gonna go ahead and call clear data which as I said before will just clear all the data in the struct it's you always want to clear the data before you regenerate. We might move it around when we work on threading, but for right now that'll be good enough. Um, we're doing a single block just to draw, you know, our good old friend the cube. So we'll just set a block position of 888. Um, we'll make a new voxel with an ID of 1, wherein 0 is going to be air, essentially, not a solid block. And then... You've got just a couple variables to help down here. These are arrays, so for each face we can set the uh, 0 through 3 in that array to be what the vertice in the face is with some clever mapping. And then when we do the, when we add the triangles, we can actually add the vertices in using that flat array. It in my experience, that makes it a little bit easier for me. You can do this any number of ways. This isn't really what matters in the long run, but this is just what I do. Then we're going to iterate over each of the face of the cube. Um, technically, we aren't checking the faces of the cube just yet. We'll be getting to that in the next part of the video when we set up our data structure. Then we've got... So here's where we map from... Our array of voxel vertices we map by the index we're on by face and then by vertice so I would be face J is the vertice we're at in that quadrilateral face and you add in the block position that we set here and we also map the UVs from each corner of the quadrilateral then we'll iterate over each of the six points for our triangles going again through our remapping here and for the triangle itself we're just going to increment a basic counter because we're doing um, we're not doing shared vertices here so each point of the triangle is going to be its own vertice it'll it ends in 36 vertices for a cube instead of eight We'll eventually add in shared vertices, but I want to wait on that until we get to our dual contouring method. So now that we've got that sorted out, we're going to go ahead and do our upload mesh, which is just going to call that upload mesh function, which um, just sets our vertices and everything and does the basic mesh functionality. We're going to make sure our local variable for mesh renderer and mesh filter and everything is set up. And if it's not, we'll call configure components, which will go through and just get components for each of them. And we want to assign our mesh filter with the mesh we just made, mesh collider as well. 
You don't have to do the mesh collider right now. It is the longest part of this whole process, realistically, but that is what it is. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and come back to our project. And in case you didn't know, when you uh, hit play, it always lags a little bit. And there's a way to speed that up. If you just come into your project settings editor and then you toggle interplay mode options, it'll help with the uh, lag when you hit play on a scene. Uh, so now that we've got that set up, we're going to go ahead and create a world manager class. And eventually this will handle the instantiation of chunks and everything else, but for right now, all we need it to do is take a material that we set and run through this little bit of code. So this is going to just, oops, like hop everything that's important. So we're gonna create a new object called container. We're gonna set the transform to be the same as the world manager object. Then the container is going to be added to it. We'll call initialize on it just to set that local material in the chunk. Then we'll call the generate mesh and upload mesh function, just like that. Helps if I make an actual scene, doesn't it? Let me uh, do that real quick. World scene. All right, and then we'll go ahead and create an empty object. Call it world manager. And then we want to go ahead and make a world material. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter right now, but just for the sake of it. And then if you hit play, you should have a handy dandy cube. The first one. Don't worry, I know this isn't a lot. That's why the second video will be releasing at the same time as this one. And that one will actually go over the data structure I'm going to use at least to start. And we'll get a little bit more going on than just a single cube. I just didn't want this video to be... 45 minutes long and 300 lines in the container to start off with so um, I hope everybody enjoyed that this is my first time doing a video like this so if you have any comments on other ways I should do things if you'd prefer me to actually write the code instead of copying it in and explaining it um, I know I prefer that in some instances but it I know it's a personal thing usually so also, I would be more than happy to work on other series in the process, so if anyone has any suggestions on something else I should work on and make tutorials for, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, thank you guys for watching.